Because Survivor is in many ways a game about power, it only makes sense the moment you introduce new toys and island trinkets into the game, players will use them to leverage for a better position. And sometimes they do a fantastic job and it makes for spectacular TV. And we'll all debate where those moves rank in a video about the top five greatest advantage plays in Survivor. But that's not this video. Ladies and gents, internet, my name is Pertium, and welcome to the crazy history of survivor players leveraging advantages and backfiring. Like when I first attempted to learn to drive manual and blew out the clutch, let's talk about when idols and advantages didn't come up clutch and weren't managed so well and the consequences of those actions. Because all the way up to present day, we have seen all sorts of mishaps happen. Take a look at JD on season 41. Now look back at me, now back to JD. And what do you know? He's voted out and his extra vote is gone. In back to back episodes, how'd that happen? JD attempted to gain trust with an ally, Shan, by allowing her to hold on to his extra vote advantage. He put a lot of faith in her and as a result was showing to her how much faith he had in her, leveraging a bit of power to gain her trust. And at first this move worked. JD survived a tribal council and Shan gave back his extra vote. And now that bad boy is back in my bag. But fool me once, shame on me. And that's it, that's the end of it. You're not gonna fool me twice. But then it happened again at the very next tribal council. I've done all I could do to convince her I'm with her. And once I get that extra vote back, it's not going anywhere, I promise. This time for real. The results led to JD getting voted out and Shan now owning his extra vote for her to use going forward. It's cold, it's calculated, and it's that assassin mindset that makes these leverages so risky in the first place. JD, I could only wish to be a pre-merge boot on a season of Survivor. I will pour one out for you. But this won't be the last time we'll see this happen, and it wasn't the first. Going all the way back to season 14, Survivor Fiji, you know, the old school Fiji, we saw the very first time an idol was given to another player for them to own. Muki found the idol and was allied with Alex, and because they thought the opposing alliance was voting for Alex, Muki gave the idol to Alex for him to play on himself. But once the opposing alliance caught word of the exchange, they simply voted for a third player on the bottom, Edgardo. Muki and Alex and Edgardo were blindsided, but what's more, in the very next episode, when the vote was coming down to either Muki or Alex and they were idolless, despite Muki being a good friend in the previous episode and giving Alex the idol, Alex then turned around and voted for Muki to go. And Muki was taken out because of Alex's vote. And then, yeah, Alex was voted out right after, so I guess it didn't really matter, but for the sake of the video topic, that was a key place to start. In the following season, China, we saw Todd give James an idol in a complicated plan that involved James throwing a challenge to force his swap tribe to go to tribal council, where James would then play the idol Todd gave him so he could blindside one of their opponents. But this plan ended up backfiring on Todd because James's swap tribe wasn't able to throw the challenge. Denise couldn't finish her balut, kind of like a reverse Nasir. And that meant James wasn't going to tribal council and wasn't going to be using this idol that he was just gifted from Todd. Likewise, to double down on this, James found a second idol at his swap tribe, meaning James now had two idols going into the merge and he had the numbers so he never needed to play them. This created a very dicey situation for Todd as his alliance began to enter the end game of the season and almost resulted in him getting eliminated by a plan he had concocted himself. I know what it is. What is it? I'll tell you tomorrow. I'm gonna tell you tomorrow. I can't open this tomorrow. You can open it tonight, but give it to me tomorrow and I will help save you. I promise. I've got a whole plan. You got this, up, James, give me a break. You gonna let Denise beat you? You got this, James. Got I can't swallow it. I can't swallow it. No, no, no. Come on, man. James scores for John Who. Perfect plan. Genius idea. Smashed. In season 17, Gabon. Of course, a leveraged idol backfiring happened here. Pretty much any bad strategic move can have Gabon as a citation. Basically, Sugar had an idol and was allied with Ace, but once her and Ace went to a swap tribe, 
the other players found her idol in her bag. Sugar then decided to give the idol to Ace to hold on to for some reason. I, I guess in the event that she was voted out, he would have it. But then neither of them were voted out. And in the next episode, Sugar took the idol back from him and was tricked by Kenny into thinking that Ace was actually not on her side. Ace felt a disturbance in the force and asked Sugar if he could have the idol back. Similar procedure as the previous episode, he might need it. But she didn't believe him this time. Kind of similar to JD on season 41 actually, Sugar believed that Ace was gonna blindside her and so she kept the idol and then voted Ace out. Even though unlike Shan, Ace was actually never turning on Sugar at all. In season 20, heroes versus villains, I think we all know where I'm going with this one. The infamous JT giving his idol to Russell, a player he had never met or spoken to, a player who was on the other tribe. JT gave Russell an idol in a Hail Mary move to form an ally across tribal lines. And it failed in spectacular fashion. JT attempted to leverage his idol to gain a number at the merge, but instead found himself loading the magazine to hand over to his enemies. Backfire of the century. We we'll win this next immunity challenge. I got a plan. Uh oh, JT got a plan. Russell, this is a huge turning point in this game. This is not fake. I wouldn't waste your time on mine. Play the idol tonight. For sure to save yourself, save because clearly, you're on the outside of an all-devouring female alliance. Right. All the girls should be writing your name down. So act like you know you're going home. I think you should write Parvati's name down and send her home. Why is everyone throwing me under the bus? They don't even know what's going on over here. Okay. Our five plus you will remain strong till the girls are done with. We can then work on getting ourselves in the final three. Big promises, JT. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, I can't believe you wrote your letter. You know what, Jeff? I think it would be downright depressing to sit and watch green bananas turn yellow without my debaucherous little villains. And Jeff, I would just like to increase our odds. So, Jerry? That one's for you too. Damn it. In season 23, South Pacific, we saw the Trojan horse strategy emerge. Ozzy had a long haired brain idea to take advantage of the Redemption Island twist. He was the most physically capable player on his tribe, and so he asked his tribe to vote him out so he could return from the duel and merge at the final 12 with even numbers, six Savai to six Upolu. Theoretically, this would give his tribe a fighting chance. And to sell this idea even more, he chose to give Cochrane his idol as a way to leverage trust with the young guy to show Cochrane that he wasn't really as on the bottom as he might appear. And when Ozzy won the duel and returned to the game, Cochrane actually gave the idol back to him. The problem was that leveraging the idol wasn't all that important to Cochrane in the grand scheme of things, and so at the next vote at the merge, Cochrane still flipped on Ozzy anyway and voted out a member of their tribe. Idol be damned. Probably should have played it on Cochrane at that point to avoid letting him go to rocks, I guess. Ozzy? Sometimes you just can't win. In season 32, Ko Rong, we saw the oh so lovely Scott and Jason work with Ty to form the super idol. One of the strongest idols in the history of Survivor, you could combine two regular idols together to make an idol that could be played after the votes were read. Ty had one regular idol, Jason had the other, and so at the final nine tribal council, Jason gave his idol to Ty as a bluff for the rest of the cast. The three guys were all in cahoots together, but with Ty holding both idols, he could form the super idol all on his own in the event any of the guys were voted out. But they weren't voted out, so Ty gave Jason's idol back to him. But then at the final eight tribal council, Jason won immunity and he gave his idol to Scott, meaning all three guys now had some form of safety. The same plan was in place as the night before. If any of them were voted out, Scott and Ty would merge their idols together to form the super idol. But despite Jason giving Ty an idol at the final nine and then giving Scott the same idol at the final eight, it proved to be all for naught, as when Scott was voted out, Ty decided to go back on his deal and not form the super idol, thus ensuring Scott left the game with Jason's idol in his pocket. Savage move from Ty. You can only play with him and Mark the Chicken's loyalty for so long. I am giving your idol back. I will accept it and I thank you so much, bud. Because I don't have room for him. Here you go, bud. Right. Now you guys are both holding one. If anything happens, you play it. If not, you give them back. Yep. Yeah. The 
fourth member of our jury, Scott. What's going on? No. So. Wow. Scott, the tribe spoke. Jason won immunity, and he said, here, take this. I trust you. I've got an idol in my pocket that belongs to Jason. It should be with him. In season 34, Game Changers, we had a whole mess of a leveraged advantage with Sarah's vote steal being given to Sari at the final seven. Sarah had this vote steal advantage and wanted to gain Sari's loyalty, so she gave it to her right before Tribal Council. The problem here was that Sari and Sarah were on different pages with their strategy. They were originally going to vote out Aubrey, but Sari wanted to vote out Ty, but Ty had an idol and Sari didn't want to steal his vote and spook him into using the idol, so she planned to steal Sarah's vote instead. But Sarah didn't get the memo, and when Sari went to use her own advantage against her and steal her vote, Sarah believed Sari had turned on her. And as it turns out, funny enough, the vote steal couldn't actually be gifted to another player to use. Sari could not use it due to the fine print at the bottom. Jeff Probst didn't even realize there was fine print at the bottom and was gonna let Sari use the vote steal. So, okay, Sarah's advantage did backfire on her when Sari tried to use it, even though she couldn't, but it also kind of didn't because Sari was still working with Sarah, but then it did backfire on Sari because Sarah turned her sights on Michaela, Sari's closest ally, and voted her out. It was, it was a whole mess, a hot mess, and all I can think to say now is, wow, this really backfired on a lot of people, least of all the fans. In season 35, Heroes vs. Healers vs. Hustlers, we saw a two-part idol pop up where Lauren found the first half of an idol and then had to retrieve the second half at the challenge. So she managed to combine them and form a single idol, but she also wanted to get Dr. Mike on her side for the upcoming vote, and to prove how committed she was to working with him, she gave him half of her idol to hold on to. And that proved to be a major mistake because Dr. Mike could not have cared less about working with Lauren, and so when they got to tribal council, after a bit of a heated debate broke out, he stood up and just threw that half of the idol that she gave him into the tribal council fire. I actually kind of wonder if Lauren could have then just reached in and, and grabbed it. I don't really see why not, other than, you know, the burning sensation. It's very interesting that you guys have decided we don't want idols, we don't want advantages. But the other side is you are, you know, tempting the survivor gods when you have the most valuable thing in the game and you throw it in the fire willingly. You know, an idol or an advantage is a blessing and a curse. Here's what people are saying at home. Don't reveal that you have an idol or an advantage. She really could have used that idol because not long after, she was voted out by a vote of one to zero once Ben dropped his own bomb to protect himself. A tribal council I once called the craziest we had ever seen up to that point. Four years ago, in fact. Random point of trivia, this week is my channel's four year anniversary. I guess if you've made it this far into the video, let me know. Time flies. And then lastly, we get to one of the biggest backfires of all time. From season 40, Winners at War, we saw the reigning two-time champion, Sandra Diaz Twine, leverage her temporary idol to Denise in exchange for two, count them, fire tokens. Sandra had an idol that was expiring after that night. It was only good for three tribal councils and this upcoming one was going to be the third and so she wanted to get something out of it because she was safely in the majority that night. She went to Denise who was at the bottom and sold her the idol for one fire token before tribal and then she would get the other fire token after tribal. Sandra told Denise that she should play the idol on herself and vote out Jeremy or maybe Tony. But Denise was allied with Jeremy, and once she realized that she held all the power and didn't even have to get rid of her extra fire token, she donned the mantle, loaded up her rifle, and went big buck hunting. Just like Lauren, by a vote of one to zero, Sandra was taken out in a moment where she probably shouldn't have been. Played a little too fast and loose for her own good. I'm giving you an idol that's real for two fire tokens. This is not a selfless act. There's something in this for her, and what I think is in it for her is, I stay in the game and her hands are clean. If anybody has a hidden immunity idol and you want to play it, now would be the time to do so. Jeff, can you give me a minute? This is a hidden immunity idol. Any votes cast for Denise will not count. I'll read the votes. Jeff, can you give me one more minute? I'd like to play those for Jeremy. For Jeremy. 
This is also a hidden immunity idol. Any votes cast for Jeremy will not count. Eighth person voted out a survivor, winners at war. But that's it. On top of whatever other future shenanigans we see beyond this video, that is the crazy history of survivor players leveraging advantages and backfiring. Backfiring so bad. There is for sure a lot more to be said about advantage gameplay in Survivor, be it idols, extra votes, vote steals, legacy advantages, or even fake ones. But I think we'll save that for another video. Regardless, I hope you all enjoyed this vid. A big thank you to my patrons for not voting me out so quickly. And don't forget, on your way out, in spite of all this noise, Survivor is and will always be about people, not paper. And I'll see you in the next one once I draft up my own fake advantage on this piece of paper production just gave me. You know what that is, Jamal? I have no idea what this is. Jamal, this is opportunity. There's no limit to what you can do with that piece of parchment. Come on, Jamal, stop thinking. What could you do with that and that pencil? Well, I guess this is the hidden immunity idol. This is pretty incredible, so you know I'm gonna have to hold on to this tight. So this is really good for me. <clears throat> Sweet. When you returned from Eye on the Idols, you presented a legacy advantage to myself. I think it's real. <laughs> While everyone was snoozing, I went ahead and got my little Picasso on and made myself a little fake legacy advantage. Does it look exactly, exactly like? Absolutely not. If I can get by with that, this one will still be left in my pocket. And I will be potentially safe at six if it is real. This is a legacy advantage. I think it's real. Um, thank you. A little smudge from the rain, but... Okay. This is not an advantage and has absolutely no power.